Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you are having a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Welcome to this special style snack. If you're new here, hello, I'm April and welcome and we are thrilled you're here. Um, I go live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time and someone's been playing with my chair. It's a little too low. Um, and do a style snack for you there. Okay. I don't feel like I'm sitting, a toddler sitting at a big table. Um, I do a style snack every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time uh, to share something with you. But this week I'm doing a special series and we are talking about one body shape per day. So Monday we did rectangle, Tuesday we did inverted triangle, Wednesday we did pear. Today we are talking about the apple body shape and we're doing a deep dive to help you decide, do you have an apple body shape and talk about um, some tips about how to dress that body shape. So go ahead and leave me any questions that you have and um, let me your comments and your questions and when I'm done I will answer them and we'll get to the best part which is chatting with you. So Melissa says she can't hear me. Let me just double check that it's not on my end because everything on my side looks right. Let's just double check. Um, and there is a delay between us. Okay, so other people can hear me. Sheila can hear me. So, Melissa, uh, it, it's um, not on my end. There's your volume or something is um, maybe turned down. Okay, so let's get going. Oh, Melissa got it figured out good. Okay, so whether you think of yourself as produce or not, you may have heard yourself referred to as an apple body shape, but you may have also heard an O body shape or a strawberry body shape. But no matter what name you prefer, your body shape is fabulous and perfect. Many articles and programs will combine the apple body shape with the inverted triangle body shape. And while they do share some characteristics, they're definitely different. And we're gonna talk about that today. Yours is one of the less common female body shapes. Um, the most common is rectangle. Second most is uh, pear. And then inverted triangle and apple kind of do this. It's hard to know the percentages as clearly because some lump them together. And then least common is hourglass, which we'll be talking about tomorrow. As an apple-shaped woman, your defining proportion is that your midsection or your waist is the same as or larger than your bust. This can be a subtle difference or one that's more dramatic. Your shoulders and your bust are also wider than your hips. So similar to an inverted triangle body shape, your torso makes a V from the back. But from the front, you look straighter because your midsection uh, appears is wider uh, from the front view. The typical O-shaped body is depicted with a strong shoulder line, a full bust, a full midsection, uh, narrower hips, a flatter bottom, and very slender but shapely limbs. You have gorgeous legs. I mean the most gorgeous legs. And while many apple-shaped women match this description, there are many variations on this body shape. An apple can have anything from a very small to a very full bust, um, a curvier bottom and fuller limbs. But the key measurements are that your shoulders are wider than your hips and your waist is the same as or larger than your shoulders or bust. So let's take a look at my handy dandy graphic here. Of an apple shaped body. 
Um, and so from the front, you can look a little more rectangle and we're going to talk about that, but, um, your hips will be narrower than your shoulders. Let's talk about other possible characteristics. You are blessed with slender, shapely, gorgeous legs. I'm going to say that about 50 times today because you have the most beautiful legs, particularly your calves, um, your delicate ankles, and your slim arms. They're just shapely and beautiful, whether you do anything or not. They just came that way. And if your calves aren't as shapely, um, they are probably very slender, and this does not change with weight gain. Your overall musculature tends to be curvy and soft, except for your legs, which tend to be well-defined. As So that's one difference between you and the inverted triangle, is that they have the shapely, well-defined arms also, but your arms tend to be softer and a little curvier, but your legs are really toned and defined. As an apple-shaped woman, you usually have a fairly flat bottom. It can be curvier, but it won't be curvy the way a pear's bottom is curvy. And your bust size can vary from small to very full and shapely. When you gain weight, it shows up first in your midsection, your shoulders and your bust. And your limbs and your hips will remain quite slim. And from the back, your body does create a V-shape as your torso narrows from your shoulders to your hips. When shopping for clothes, you typically wear a larger size up top and a smaller size on bottom. Um, the exception to that can be if you're wearing a larger size to accommodate your waist size, um, but then your biggest shopping struggle is to find pants that will fit your waist without drowning your hips and your legs. Wearing the wrong pants can create a muffin top where there is none. And in my new masterclass, it's not you, it's the pants. Four tips to find the perfect pants so you never have a muffin top again. We talk about how to find pants that fit you right in the, in the waist and the hips. And it's free. You can sign up at stunningstyle.com forward slash pants. And it's next week on Tuesday only. If you can't make it Tuesday evening, sign up anyway, and we will send you a replay in an email. And because um, I know not everyone's available next Tuesday evening. So sign up anyway. It's just the, it's just the only night I can do it. Um, and we'll send you a replay video link. So the best asset of an apple shaped woman is her fabulous legs, and sometimes a full shapely bust. Your primary complaint is usually your proportionally larger waistline, or larger, proportionally. This is all about proportions. Every one of these body shapes is about proportions. No part of you is too big or too small. They're just proportional. So let's talk about some of the common myths related to your body shape. As I mentioned before, many articles and books and programs will put the inverted triangle body shape and the apple body shapes into the same category, thinking they are the same body shape at different sizes, but they're actually different body shapes that need to be dressed differently. Dressing an apple and dressing an inverted triangle um, in the same clothes will lead to frustration and reinforce the idea that there's something wrong with your body. And there's not. It's not you. It's the clothes. And we will discuss the differences between these two body shapes in depth in just a minute. Um, the second myth is that all apple body shapes are plus size and they're not. You can be a slim apple like Reese Withers Witherspoon and you can, when you gain weight, it shows up in your middle. So your middle section fills out quickly. Um, Kate Upton is a great example of a slender apple. 
She's a supermodel. She has the full bust, the shapely legs, the uh, flatter bottom. And clearly, we all think it's fabulous because she's a supermodel. But you can see um, her her midsection is not as full as how you we describe the typical apple. But you can see that her um, in this bikini picture, her midsection is fuller, but her legs and arms have remained very very slim. So she's not a rectangle because a rectangle will fill out um, proportionally as they gain weight their arms and their legs head to toe they fill out proportionally and they maintain that and not the case with an apple so her you can see how slim her legs and arms are um, but she has she it fills out in the middle so she hasn't uh, reached that uh, stereotypical apple shape, but she would very quickly and very easily. Um, and you can just tell, you can see it here, but she's fabulous. She looks gorgeous. Perfect right there. And no matter how her body changes, it's still perfect is what I mean. Um, so Let's talk about apple versus inverted triangle. You lean toward an inverted triangle shape because your shoulders and bust are wider than your hips. And if you slim down, you do become an inverted triangle. So even though other body shapes cannot change from one to the other, I think I've said that several times this week, you don't morph from a pear to an hourglass to an apple to a rectangle. You don't do that. You're born with your body shape. It's determined by your bone structure and your DNA of where fat deposits accumulate on your body. It, it is what it is. But apples are the only body shape that transform into a different body shape based on weight loss and weight gain. So when they're more slender, um, they look like an inverted triangle because of the shoulders to hips ratio. Um, and as they gain weight, it goes straight to their midsection and it doesn't have to be much. Um, it goes straight to their midsection and they start to develop that, that they can kind of transition through the rectangle into the apple shape. So it's, uh, but an inverted triangle doesn't do that. The main differences are apples gain their weight in their midsection first. That's in their torso, like their, their bust, their midsection, and their shoulders. An inverted triangle can gain weight in their midsection eventually. It's not where it goes first. Inverted triangles are also tend to be more angular and muscular in their arms, their shoulders, and their torsos. And apples are softer and rounder in those areas. In general, apples are curvier than inverted triangles. So, you know, an inverted triangle will have a very angular shape here. Um, and the defined muscles on the arms and on their back and, and even in their midsection. But an apple has softer shoulders. Their arms aren't defined like that. I mean, unless they work at it, right? But they just have an overall softer musculature from the hips up. But they do share the killer, killer legs. Um, let me show you a picture of of what I mean. So Drew Barrymore is um, an apple. And on the left, you see her uh, in the 90s when she was quite slim. You can see her arms are just softer. And um, 
not really well defined. And then in the second picture, you can see her more as she's filled out in the middle. Um, True Perry more wears a lot of very boho, soft, full clothes. It's hard to find pictures that really show her shape very clearly, like to show you her how slim her legs still are right now. And then you can see Renee Zellweger, who is a true inverted triangle, and how angular and straight her shoulders are and kind of defined. And in on the right, she is, has put on weight for a movie role, but it didn't go to her midsection the way it does for Drew. So there's a difference here. Um, and if you are looking more like the Drew Barrymore of the 90s, then dressing as an inverted triangle would be the right choice for you. You would only choose to follow the apple um, shape recommendations if you actually, if your body actually looks like that right now. And so part of me didn't want to bring this up, but I do get questions for, because I didn't want to muddy the waters, but I get questions about this whole metamorphosis. Like I was, I was a rectangle and now I'm a pear. And no, you weren't. And yes, you are. You've always been. Uh, but in this particular case, it's true that you can start out as an inverted triangle, kind of shift through that uh, rectangle shape into the, um, apple shape, only if you're actually an apple. And the other body shapes won't do that. So um, it's one of those things that you can make you feel like you're crazy. Like, no, I know that this has happened to me. And so I just feel like I have to acknowledge it because it's true. But I don't want to confuse people, but it's true. So as an apple, you can lean toward a rectangle shape when your middle section isn't as full and your shoulder to hip ratio um, isn't looking as dramatic because you kind of filled out somewhat in the middle. And Reese Witherspoon is a great example of that. Let me show you her. Here on the left, you can see that, oh my goodness, I've got stuff popping up. She's looking more rectangular. And then um, on in the middle, her midsection has started to fill out more and it's kind of matched up with her bust line. And she's also a great example of a slim apple. Um, her, her, her midsection has kind of matched up with her bust here. And then on the right, you have a true rectangle in Kate Hudson. And she's just very straight uh, top to bottom. That won't change as, um, as she ages, I mean, as she gains weight or as she ages. You can confuse yourself with an hourglass if you're full busted and you have that narrow waist and then you've got these really shapely legs. Um, if, you're, if you're a slim apple, you can confuse yourself with an hourglass, but your hips won't be wide enough to be an hourglass. Your hips and your shoulder line have to match up. And we're talking about hourglass in depth tomorrow, but Part of the reason this is a misconception is because these busty, slender apples are used in, uh, are presented as these bombshells because they are, they're gorgeous. And uh, Jessica Simpson and Catherine Bach were both Hollywood bombshells because of their shapely bust and their gorgeous legs. And they both played the character of Daisy Duke but both of them are actually apples. And because they're so shapely up and they're so shapely down, the brain just kind of fills in um, the middle. And I remember reading an article about Jessica Simpson like doing squats or something to get ready for this role and how her husband at the time was like, oh, you're finally getting a, 
a booty. And I'm like, Jessica Simpson doesn't have a booty. What? You talking about? And uh, I guess she didn't, doesn't, you know, because she's not actually um, an hourglass. And you can see anytime they pop their hip like, like Catherine Bach, or uh, I'm, I'm mixing up all the names. Um, yes, Catherine Bach and Jessica Simpson, they pop their hip like that to create, the, create that curve there. So let's talk about some famous apple body shapes. Drew Barrymore, Reese um, Witherspoon, Rebel Wilson, Catherine Bach, Chrissy Metz, and Eva Longoria are other famous apple body shapes. And let me show you some of those. So this is Chrissy Metz. She is um, in the show, This Is Us. If you've never seen it, it's so good. And she is an apple. And on the picture on the right, you can just see how gorgeous her legs are. And she's got those delicate ankles. And you can also see how slim her arms and legs are in proportion. Um, and let me show you another one. Rebel Wilson is another, she's one of my favorite actresses. She's another apple. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan. She's hysterical and she's gorgeous. Uh, but she is another famous apple body shaped actress. Another one is, as I mentioned, Drew Barrymore. Another actress I really love. I mean, I kind of grew up with her, right? And you can see how slim her arms are here. I tried to pick, find a picture of her. Uh, so she has gorgeous legs too, and I couldn't find a good one. Um, Cause like I said, she really likes that flowy and it's not because she's, <clears throat> her clothing size has changed. She's always favored that style of clothing. It's just, it's just her, her style and she loves it. And this is, this model here is also an apple shape. And you can see how slim her legs are and her arms in proportion to her uh, shoulders, bust and midsection. And I love, like I've said, I think every day this week, I love that they are being more inclusive in size, body shape, and ethnicity in models. And, you know, we can, we, we can, um, we vote with our dollars. And so anytime they're being uh, more inclusive, we need to let them know that we support that. This is Eva Longoria. She's another example of a slim apple. She, look at her legs. I, I I have a fixation on how gorgeous apple legs are. Um, but she is another example of how uh, you can see here that her, her uh, midsection has started to match up with her bust. Let's see if I forgot any. Okay, no, I got them. So let's talk about how to dress an apple body shape. Most body shape articles and courses and books focus on covering or hiding parts of your body, which just adds to the shame in the media lie that we all need to achieve some impossible ideal that some group of people have decided we should all strive for. And it's not true and it's not fair. And that ideal changes and changes and changes from decade to decade, century to century, millennium to millennium. And um, it's just, it's honestly, it's usually the artists previously who would decide what was the most beautiful female body shape and they would paint it and they would sculpt it and they would put it out there as an ideal. Or it also, uh, sometimes it was kind of dictated by whoever 
the queen was or some reigning um, woman in nobility, she would be set up as the beauty ideal and then everyone else would try to look like her. And then the next one would come along. And the truth is we're all beautiful and all body shapes, all body sizes are beautiful. And your apple shaped body is perfect. It is beautiful. And we don't want to cover anything up. Instead, we're going to direct the spotlight to accentuate and highlight your very best parts, your favorite parts. So think of it like a stage production. The lighting crew spotlights certain parts of the stage to direct our attention to where they want us to look. This is where the action's happening. You don't miss it or you're gonna miss the storyline or they do it to distract us so that we don't see the stage crew doing a set change over here on the side. They might be creating an effect like magic. And we can do the same thing with our outfits, spotlighting the parts where we want to focus their attention and use that to make them see what we want them to see. So when you work with, instead of against your natural, fabulous features, it is so freeing. Suddenly you feel permission to fall in love with your body again, or maybe for the first time. And you should, because it's perfect, just the way it is. So let's talk about your spotlight goal. Your shoulders, bust, and legs are amazing, if I haven't made that clear. And we want to make sure they get the spotlight. We want to draw the eye away from your spotlight stealing midsection and focus on your very best features. So don't help your middle steal the spotlight from your fabulous, but always not always as noticeable legs, bust, and shoulders by giving it a microphone and theme music too. In order to shine the spotlight up to your shoulders and bust and down to your gorgeous gams, we want to create vertical lines that draw the eye up and down. Choosing clothes that add curves and fullness to your lower body might sound counterintuitive, but it will actually help create a more defined waistline and balance your shoulders, which provide excellent structure for your tops. So you can do this by wearing lighter colors and patterns on the bottom and using accessories like shoes, necklaces, earrings, and other details to draw the eye up and down. And keeping the waist area quiet and boring will keep the spotlight shining exactly where you want it. So the last thing I want to talk about is the biggest outfit mistakes an apple body shape so because your lower half is so easy to dress and so slim compared to your upper torso, you tend to wear fitted, very fitted bottoms like skinny jeans to accentuate that. And even though your gorgeous legs are possibly your very best feature because they're so fabulous, shining a spotlight, like doing that actually shines the spotlight on the difference in proportion between your midsection and your hips, and it exaggerates the apple shape of your body. Or, so you either do that, or you go to the other extreme and you opt for oversized tunic shapeless looks in an effort to try to hide your midsection. So it's not necessary to hide anything and it doesn't achieve the desired result anyway. Nothing needs to be hidden or covered up. And when you do that, none of your fabulous features get to shine. So instead of drowning your figure in fabric, skim your shape, fill out your lower half so we get to see the very best of you. Your body shape has so many fabulous features and I hope that we've made that clear today. And it's easy to focus on what you don't love. We've been trained to do that. We've been trained as women to pick apart our bodies and to tear ourselves down and to focus on the thing that's not perfect or the thing that's wrong instead of loving and appreciating all the amazing things about our bodies. And when you learn to work with your body and feature your best assets, it's easy to love your fabulous shape. So I hope this was helpful. 
And I would love to know what your big aha moment was, if you recognize yourself in this description um, and any questions you have. So go ahead and add them here in the comments and we'll have a chat. Pat is here from Ottawa. Hello, Pat. Um, several of you can hear me. One of you wants to know what sort of skirts are good for an apple shape? Well, several. And there's a whole in my uh, course, um, Style Your Silhouette course, it's all about dressing for your body shape. And there are eight lessons dedicated to bottoms, including pants, shorts, and skirts. And there are a lot of factors that go into it. And we cover all of that in the course. And if you want to know more about it, you can go to stunningstyle.com forward slash love my body. Oh, I could have bring a oh, brain freeze every time I say that. I think it's love my body. Um, and style, stunningstyle.com forward slash love my body. Yes, got it. Thank you. Um, and the doors are closed right now, but we will be opening them again soon, and you don't want to miss that. Sheila says, pear or apple? Are you asking what we were talking about today? We we're talking about apple shape today. Nancy says, happy Thursday. Hello. Um, Kelly says, I am an apple, but on top of that, I have very short torso and long legs. No waist, even when I am thin. I have to be bone thin to even look like I have a waist. Kelly, no apples have a waist. That's part of the part of the apple shape at any size. Um, you you do that in even at your slimmest. You do that inverted triangle thing where you don't have a waist, and that is totally normal. And the short torso uh, just adds to that. I have a short torso as well, and the long legs. So that's part of it. But when you dress for your apple body shape, um, you can create the illusion of a waist and um, yeah, so no, apples don't have a waistline. That's part of the body shape. Colleen says, any examples of apples who are not slim? So, um, you know, I wanted to show a variety of versions of the body shape, and I do that in the course as well, and I've done it for all the other body shapes. Um, so we looked at um, Rebel Wilson, uh, Chrissy Metz, Drew Barrymore, um, but, you know, I try to be as inclusive as possible to show the whole gamut. Of course, I'm limited by what's available on the internet. Um, but so I did, I did it kind of half and half. Liz says, how do you hide a muffin top? Well, so you don't actually have a muffin top. Your pants give you a muffin top. The wrong pants give you a muffin top. And that is what we're talking about in the masterclass on Tuesday is finding the right pants for you because it's not you, it's the pants. And it's a free masterclass. You can sign up for that at stunningstyle.com forward slash pants. That one's so much easier to remember. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking all about that. And so I have four tips for you, but then I tell you how to apply each tip based on your body shape. So it's body shape specific. Colleen says, I was stunned that I shouldn't be wearing skinny jeans slacks. That makes up the majority of my bottoms. Thanks for letting me know. There are ways to wear them, um, but they're not, they're not your best. And should, it's totally, I mean, should is a loaded word. Uh, it's, a, it's a recommendation. You get to decide whether you adopt it or not. So um, it's not. I don't, I don't give rules. I mean, I don't, I share with you the recommendations and instead of rules, we think of them as tools and it's tools in a toolbox or a buffet of options. And you get to decide which ones you want to use on any given day. And if you don't want to follow that one, then don't, I don't follow all the ones for mine because I don't feel like it. 
like there's just some things I'm not going to give up because I love them. And in course two, so style your silhouette is actually two courses because it got so big. I had to, um, I had to split it up. It was just so big. And in course two, so in course one, you learn all the rules and uh, tools of how to dress for your body shape. And then in course two, I teach you how to break them because, because you love what you love, right? You want to wear what you want to wear. And, and we just also talk a lot about the fact that you get to decide what you will and won't follow. Knowledge is power, you know, and so you know all of the tools and then you can decide which ones you do and don't want to break based on, um, knowing what it does, right? And what you prefer. So this does not mean you have to go throw out all your skinny pants. It's a, it's a decision. And I didn't tell you to, it's a decision that you get to decide, you get to make. Let's see, one of you says, I have been struggling to figure out my shape. I thought I was an apple, but then I lost some weight and second guessed myself. Glad to know that we really are the shape shifters. You are, you, you are divergent. The only two shapes that you will never be are hourglass and apple, but you can shape shift from inverted triangle through rectangle into apple and back again. Christine says, I'm still so confused. Really the only thing that makes me an apple is my abdomen. My shoulders are slightly narrower than my hips. So am I a pear or heavy rectangle? I don't have slim, gorgeous legs. I have quite large knees and thighs, but my hips are straight, not curvy. I'm still confused. Um, well, Christine, your description, our, our personal perceptions are highly loaded, you know, and the way that we describe ourselves can be unkind and unfair. Um, and I say this because I've done it and the women around me do it. And when I hear, you know, my best friend talk about her huge knees and I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> Nobody else sees your knees. Like she's, she thinks her knees, like there's no, her knee, there's nothing about her knees, but she seems to think they, they are, you know, um, and we all have the, maybe somebody else said something to you, but, um, so we, we, we never, uh, paint the kindest picture of ourselves to ourselves or to others. Um, but if you have, if your midsection matches up to, or exceeds your bust or your shoulders, then you are an apple. I'm just reading your description again. Um, you know, yesterday, I don't think I have it open anymore. We talked, we looked at an example of um, an hourglass or not an hourglass, a pair who, who uh, did look like I'm here. I found it really quickly. Let's look at this picture. A pear can start to look like an apple. So um, this is Melissa McCarthy, also an actress I adore. She's so funny. I love funny. I love funny. That's my favorite. Um, and in on the left, she does have an apple shape. And so at this stage of her life, following the Apple recommendations would have been the best for her. But then you can see in the middle that she really truly is a pair. So she has the full thighs um, in the full seat and the full hips. But on the left, she her her midsection is fuller if that makes sense. So 
Um, you know, it's hard to say just based on your description, but that could be something. But um, so if your hips are straight, it could be a rectangle that is has moved into Apple territory. A Facebook user says, thank you so much. I was very confused as to my body type and now believe I am a rectangle by eliminating the other types. Well, good. I hope this was helpful. One of you says it's confusing because I do have bigger arms, always have, and everyone says apples have slim arms. So that is the majority, right? But it is not the defining proportions. So we cover the defining proportions first. The other parts are likely characteristics. So not every single apple will have the slim arms, but a lot of them do. And so that can be something that you go, ah, I get it now. I get it. Yes. And it, but it's not a defining characteristic. So you can still be an apple and not have the really slim arms. Um, but it, it is, it is a feature that a lot do have. Rachel says, I carry all my weight in my abdomen and I always have, but I have a small bust and narrow shoulders and am I still an apple? Yes. Your, your, your shoulders are narrower than your abdomen, but they're probably wider than your hips. If you look from the back, that's another trick. When you're looking um, at an apple shape from the front, you're like, no, no, my shoulders and my hips match up. Look at yourself from the back and you'll see that V shape. If you're a true apple and you'll see that your shoulders are wider than your hips. Rachel says, I definitely have a muffin top. I carry my weight in a ring around my body. Well, but that's not a muffin top. A muffin top and I do hate that term, but um, I want to help as many women as I can. And so I have to use a term that, that we all understand because it's been put out there. But a muffin top is when your abdomen is, is pouring out of the top of your pants. Uh, what in the, in the South, they call it Dunlap disease. When your belly Dunlapped over your belt, you know what I'm talking about? You don't have that, except when you wear pants, the wrong pants, pants do that to you. Rachel sells, says this sounds exactly like me. Well, I hope that's helpful then. Good. Can you be an inverted triangle with soft arms? Yeah. Like I said, if that is not a defining feature of an inverted triangle, the toned muscular arms. Um, the defining feature is that your shoulders are wider than your hips. And um, the defined toned arms are a likely possible characteristic. But we're all there. I mean, how many billions of women are there in the world? And we're not all going to fit into these perfectly into these five molds. There are so many variations of these molds. We're talking about the defining characteristic that puts you in that category and then other possible characteristics that you may have some of or none of or all of. You could be the walking stereotype of your body shape, but there is this very specific criteria that puts you in a, in a body shape. And these other things are, the words I kept using were possibly, maybe, could have over and over again. There were no absolutes in anything but these defining proportions. Peggy says, I have short legs that aren't typically lean or shapely except my very full calves, but my ankles aren't thin, squarish hips. Am I still an apple? Um, like I said, you don't, the, the, le the slim legs and the delicate ankles are a possible characteristic, a stereotypical characteristic that a lot of apples have, but you may not have them. Look, if your midsection is wider or as wide as your bust or your shoulders, 
and your hips are narrower from the back, look at the back where you can truly see them, then yes, you are an apple. Christine says, so should one dress to accommodate the shape one currently is here apple, then if weight loss shows I'm more pararectangle dress to accommodate that. Yes, dress and love the body you have today, right now. Not the one you had last week and not the one you'll have in a month, today. That is what matters because the clothes, you know, we're gonna go back to the boat, the boat analogy, the boat cover analogy. If you are, <laughs> a sailboat and you have the mast and the sails and you buy a boat cover for a speedboat, it's not going to fit. And so if you are currently a sailboat, get the cover that fits your sailboat. And if someone comes on and cuts off that mast and those sails and suddenly you look like a speedboat, then we'll start dressing for that. But right now, dress and love the body you have today. It is perfect just as it is. And whatever your body looked like 10 years ago was perfect, just as it was. And however your body looks in 10 years will be perfect, just as it is. Love and dress the body you have today, because if you cannot love it today, you will not love it in whatever you envision to be your perfect ideal. In 20 pounds, you're not going to love it if you don't love it today, because you'll find something new to pick, pick yourself apart about. I've seen it over and over and over again. You think that, you know, if I can just this or that, then I can love my body. If I can get toned, if I can lose weight, if I can get in shape. No, you will find something else to tear yourself apart about. Love it just as it is at every stage, at every stage. And dress it just as it is. And if weight loss shows that you are more pear or rectangle, Christine, then you can dress to accommodate that. But right now, dress it just as it is. One of you says, I think I'm an apple. Well, I hope that was helpful then, and I hope that helped clear it up. Colleen has to go back to work now. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Colleen, and I hope that was helpful. Um, and those are all the comments and questions that I see right now. But um, tomorrow I'll be talking about Hourglass. And I hope you watch all of these or read them all there as we do them they go up on my website and you can read it if that's faster for you and see the pictures there or you can watch the video and um if so many of you have started out saying oh i think i am the rectangle and then you saw the inverted triangle or the pair and you're like oh no definitely no i'm not i'm this and so seeing all of them can really help you uh figure it out if you have any question at all, like if you're not sure, because a lot of women are wrong about what body shape they are. Either someone told them wrong, or like I said, we don't see ourselves accurately or kindly. Um, and we tend to, it's called body dysmorphia. And we uh, don't see ourselves clearly. So um, tomorrow is hourglass at 1 p.m. Eastern time again, same place. Amelia says, I carry weight all over even after weight loss. Wide ankles, legs are, oh, it moved. Legs are trying to take some definition. Stomach still round, but I see a waist and my bust size is prominent. Am I still an apple? Well, I mean, Amelia, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't tell you from, um, from that, but that's why we have these defining proportions. There's also, um, a worksheet. I did a whole thing about measuring a, a, a style snack and a blog post about how to measure for your body shape. There's a worksheet that comes with it that you can download. It's free. And that's why we have these defining proportions. If this, then that. And so you can, we'll put the link to that here. Um, and you can, you can watch that video or read through it and uh, download the worksheet. But just from, um, I think from a description like that, I can't, I couldn't possibly tell you. Christine says, I love, love, love your body positive reminders. 
Well, I love, love, love that you're listening to them, Christine. And I know that me saying one time, you should love your body, it's really perfect, is not going to make you just go, oh my gosh, you're, like, you're so right. What was I thinking all these years? Because those negative messages have been pounded into us and reinforced so many times. It's, it's not just like that. But I hope that if I say it enough times, if you hear me enough times, if we talk about how beautiful and perfect your body is enough times, that will start to sink in. And maybe those negative voices will get quieter and my voice will get louder. And then soon your voice will join the chorus because I have torn myself apart for years, decades, hating my body for not looking the way I thought it should based on what was given to me in the media. At every stage of my life, I hated my body for not looking the way it, they said it should. And the truth is, it was always perfect. Always. Even though it has looked dramatically different over the years, it was never not perfect. And I have three daughters that are all very different. And I don't ever want them to look at each other or look at me or look at their friends and say, I'm supposed to look like that. Why don't, what's wrong with me that I don't look like that? I want them to know that they are perfect, exactly as they are every day of their lives. And if we can just share this message, I'm sharing it with you. I want you to share it with others. And if it helps, share my videos, share my blog posts. If you don't have the words, I have them. But we can share this message with the women that we love. And then maybe they'll believe us and they'll start sharing it too. And we can be the change. Um, Amelia says, thank you for the information. Well, you're welcome, Amelia. Kathy says, I'm going to go get the worksheet. Thank you. I'm leaving rectangle. Well, Kathy, the worksheet should help you. And along with the worksheet, there's a body shape matrix that I created that goes through across the top, each body shape and down the side, the body parts. We start with the defining proportions and then we go through the possible, likely, but not definitely characteristics that can, one of those might be the one that you go, okay, yes. Now I for sure, like if you were teetering, you're like, no, 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 no. That's the one that you're like, mm, okay, no, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, that should really help. Christy says, I love that you share all these details in a positive manner. All of these ladies have lovely features, no matter their shape or size. Christy, thank you. And can I tell you that I have not seen anybody else out there talking about it in a positive way. And that really bothered me. When I started learning about this myself, it was all about how to cover this, how to hide that, what I'm supposed to be ashamed of. And I don't need to cover or hide anything and neither do you. And none of us should be ashamed of any of it. That is just, I mean, on the one hand, they're trying to be helpful. And on the other hand, they're just adding to the shame. And I don't, I don't agree with that at all. It's hurtful. It's harmful. And um, I don't think they, and they don't do it on purpose. They're not sitting there with an evil laugh going, I'm going to make them feel terrible about themselves. They genuinely want to help, I believe, but they believe it too. It's a message that they were fed also. And so I can tell you, because I've said those things in the past, I have about myself because I believed it. And, and finally, I don't. So it's not like all my life I've had this body positive like mindset. I believed it and I have no doubt you may even find things on my website from years ago that say something about covering or hiding and oh my gosh, if you find it, let me know because I want to change it because it's not true, but I believed it too. And now I don't. Now I know differently and I, um, so I'm not blaming or shaming them either. They are, they're also a product of this mentality that has been going on for thousands of years. This is not new not new. So, um, Amelia says, 
you're amazing, giving us all some kindness. Well, we all deserve kindness. And um, sometimes it's really hard to give it to ourselves. So I'll give you some first and, and maybe that'll help. Jenny says, all women are beautiful regardless of shape or size. Well, it's, it, it's not regardless, it's, it's because of. Everything about you is beautiful. We're not accepting like, um, you know, like when we pay someone a compliment, we're like, oh, you're so pretty for a fill in the blank. You look so great for a fill in the blank. There's a, when there's a qualifier attached to it, it's not really a compliment. And we do that to ourselves or you're really smart for a girl kind of thing. You know what I mean? You're like, no, I'm just smart. My vagina has nothing to do with my brain, my intelligence level. So thank you. Um, you know, you're really pretty for a girl in glasses. <laughs> the glasses, my glasses have nothing to do with it. You look really good with your, even with your glasses on. Even with my glasses on, I still look really, thank you. I, I look good with or without, but like my glasses have nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know? So it's, um, we all do it. We all have this, it's been trained. We've been trained to say and think these things. And I'm retraining myself and, and I, I hope you're enjoying the boot camp because this is not a message I'm going to stop with. We're going to be talking about this all the time. Um, Leah says, stunning style. I never thought of myself as hourglass because I'm so flat chested, but my shoulders and hips are almost equal and my waist is narrow. So I guess I qualify here. Well, an hourglass has a very full bust, very full. We're talking about hourglass tomorrow. Um, so join me then, but uh, an hourglass has a has a full bust for sure. Um, so you don't want to miss that one. We'll be here at 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow for the final installment of this body shape series. I thank all of you for joining me um, for this. I appreciate your time. Oh my gosh. Leslie says, when I was younger, my grandmother told me that my cousin's legs aren't fat like mine. Hence the reason why I have a complex. See, that's awful. I'm so sorry she said that. And it's amazing how one comment like that can stick with you your whole entire life. I bet a lot of you have a similar thing. And you know what? Maybe someone said something like that to your grandmother when she was a kid. And you think about these, you know, these situations that happened in the past. And then we find ourselves reliving them. You know, doing the same thing to others. Like how someone who was bullied becomes a bully. And we don't even realize it sometimes. I'm so sorry she said that to you. Your legs are not fat. Your legs are perfect. They're beautiful. Uh, let's see. One of you says, growing up, I was incredibly skinny and hated that fact. Now I'm in a pause. I have put on so much weight. And I don't like how I look in clothes, but I love your positivity. And I'm trying very hard to love my body where it is today and dress to make me happy. I've, I've been there. <laughs> I was all elbows and knees and skin and bones and scrawniness growing up. And um, I was teased for it and I hated it, but I was perfect then, wasn't I? And so are you. Um, and you're perfect now. And I love, love, love that you are trying to love your body where it is today and dress to feel great about yourself. That's all you can do. So, um, I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Amelia says, thank you. You're welcome, Amelia. Leslie says, thank you. You're welcome. Christy says, oh, she's responding to Leslie. People have no filter. I'm sorry. Oh, that is the truth. Um, Kate says, that was similar to me. My mother said I was the youngest one, but the biggest. And yeah, I, it's some, yeah. Moms don't think we say things sometimes because we're, I don't know. I'm very awkward. And if I'm uncomfortable, I either say, I either freeze like a deer in the headlights or I say awkward, inappropriate things. <laughs> so maybe your mom was doing that. I hope I've never said anything like that about my kids. 
like when you're trying to be funny to diffuse your discomfort and you say something like that. Um, but what's wrong with being the biggest? Nothing. I know we say it like it's a negative thing, but um, there's nothing wrong with it. Jenny says, my apple-shaped mom hated her shape, but she was beautiful all along. I think a lot of our moms hated their shapes, and they, they were beautiful all along because they were told to hate them. So we're going to be different. We're going to be, I hope my, I hope my children are better people than I am. My parents want us to be better than they are. And um, yeah, so we can be better than our parents. And I don't mean that in, in an unkind way. They did the best they could with what they had and what they learned. And now we can do better when we know better. And then hopefully our example will help our children do better than that. And this is one way that we can do it. So thank you so much for joining me. Join me again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time to finish this off. And you can also sign up for my free masterclass at stunningstyle.com forward slash pants. It's going to be really good. And um, if you want to know more about the Stunning Style, the Style Your Silhouette Body Shape course, you can go to stunningstyle.com slash forward slash love my body to learn more there and to join the waiting list because we will be opening the doors again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. You're all fantastic. You're all beautiful. You're all perfect. And I will see you tomorrow.